This video is gonna go over vapor pressure and boiling point. Let's start by defining vapor pressure. Vapor pressure is the partial pressure of a gas over the surface of a liquid. Let's consider this container half full of water in the liquid state. There's a lid on it, so it's completely closed off. And somehow up above the surface of this liquid water, we have managed to create a vacuum, which means there are no gas molecules in this space at all. This is just absolute emptiness. We're gonna label this as our initial condition. And we're also gonna make a note that in this initial condition, we have no molecules of water in the gas phase. Now, this system will not stay like this. If we leave it alone, we don't even have to do anything to it at all. Just leave it sitting. Some of our water molecules are going to evaporate or vaporize up into the gas state. This process of evaporation is going to continue until the amount of water in the gas state is equal to the vapor pressure. So let's make a note of this. The liquid, in this case water, evaporates until the pressure of the water in the gas state up above the surface of the liquid reaches or is equal to the vapor pressure. Vapor pressure is a number that depends on two things. First of all, it depends on what you have. So the vapor pressure of water is specific to water. It also depends on the temperature. So we need to know what the temperature is of this particular system. Once we know the temperature of this particular system, we'll know what the vapor pressure should be. This process of evaporation or vaporization will continue until the pressure of the gas up above the surface of this liquid reaches what we know to be the vapor pressure at whatever temperature we're at. Now, once we get to that point where we've reached the vapor pressure, we enter into our final situation or our final conditions here, which we call equilibrium. Once our system reaches that limit the vapor pressure we reaches the limit of the amount of gas that it can have up above the surface of this liquid. This process of evaporation cannot continue unless we are also simultaneously condensing some of the gas back down to the liquid phase. The vapor pressure represents the maximum amount of gas that can exist above the surface of the liquid. We can't put any more gas up unless we allow some of that gas to come back down and, and condense back to the liquid. So equilibrium is what we would call or define as simultaneous, in this situation, evaporation and condensation. And this is done to maintain the vapor pressure. Now, as I said, vapor pressure is a number that depends not only on what type of molecule you're looking at, but it also depends on the temperature. As temperature gets higher, vapor pressure gets higher as well. So if this was in a warm environment, we would see that the vapor pressure would be much greater than if it were in a cold environment. As you continue to raise the temperature, it gets warmer and warmer and warmer. Eventually you get to a point where the vapor pressure is very high. And we define this as the boiling point. The boiling point specifically is the temperature at which the vapor pressure is equal to the surrounding atmospheric pressure, which is basically the maximum pressure that it could be. Temperature at which vapor pressure is equal to the atmospheric pressure. Vapor pressure and boiling point, both of them are dependent or related to the strength of the intermolecular forces of the molecule inside the container. If that molecule has very strong intermolecular forces, 
This means that it is going to have a very low vapor pressure. And if we think about how intermolecular forces um, play a role here, this should make sense. Remember intermolecular forces help to stick our molecules together. And if the molecules are struck, stuck together very tightly by strong intermolecular forces, we're not gonna see a large number of them evaporating up into the, the gas state. So that means that we will have a low vapor pressure, a low number or a low amount of molecules in the gas state. This also corresponds to a slow evaporation process. Just thinking in terms of time, it is going to take a long time to get the molecules to evaporate up into the gas phase. Again, because their strong intermolecular forces are holding them together very tightly. This also corresponds to the molecule having a high boiling point, a high temperature at which it bo uh, boils. Again, because our molecules are held together so tightly, it takes a lot of time and a lot of energy, a high temperature, to get them to this point where they are in this equilibrium um, and the vapor pressure is equal to atmospheric pressure. And last but not least, strong intermolecular forces also correspond to a small temperature change. I'm gonna write that as delta T, a small change in temperature during the evaporation process. So some substances, uh, when they are evaporating, if they are evaporating very rapidly, there's a pretty significant temperature change during that process. You may have experienced this, you've probably experienced this if you have got rubbing alcohol on your skin, like maybe in preparation for a vaccination. When you get rubbing alcohol on your skin, it feels pretty cold. This is an example of a large change in temperature during the evaporation process. So rubbing alcohol on your skin is evaporating very quickly due to low intermolecular forces, a high vapor pressure, a rapid evaporation, and a low boiling point. If we have a molecule that has very strong intermolecular forces, low vapor pressure, and a slow evaporation process, we won't really notice much of a temperature change during that slow evaporation process.